Hi friends, welcome to today's class. In this class, we are going to talk about addressing problems that teachers teaching English for primary classes said they have been facing. What are these problems and how are we going to address them? This is not a grammar class. But indirectly, we are going to address the problem with regarding to the basic sentence structure in English. So, it's subject, verb, object in English versus the normal sentence structure in most of the South Indian languages and also Hindi. The normal sentence structure there, it is like subject, object, verb. Karta, karma, kriya in Telugu and also Karta Karma Kriya in Hindi. That means the basic sentence structure in South Indian languages and also Hindi is subject, object and verb. But I told you already this is not a grammar class. Then how? What are we going to do? So we are going to try to find out some solutions to the classroom problems. Especially using the bridging gap activity proposed by Chomskyan linguist Dr. K. N. Anandan. So that means we are going to deal with subject, verb, object, sentence structures versus subject, object, verb, sentence structures of our mother tongue. But we are not going to tell the students that this is the subject, this is the verb, this is the object. Instead of doing that, we can do an activity which addresses this problem. Let's see what we can do. Before that, let's observe these two sentences. The first sentence is written in Hindi. Sita apni kamre me baiti hui hai. Here, Sita is the subject, kamra is the object and baitna is the Verb, subject, object, verb is the pattern here. And if we come to the other South Indian languages like Telugu and Kannada, we can see the sentence pattern is like this. Sita tanagadilo kurchunadi. It's the same sentence that we have written in Hindi. Sita, subject, gadi, object, kurchunadi is the verb. Here, the sentence pattern is subject, object, verb. That means most of the Indian languages, they have this basic sentence structure pattern in this manner. So, Sita apni kamre me baiti hui hai, Hindi. Sita ta nagadilo kurchunnadi, Telugu. Now let's see the same sentence in English. Sita is sitting in the room. Here. You can see that Sita is the subject, room is the object, sitting is the verb. Here the verb is placed between the subject and the object. So that's the difference between some of the South Indian languages, Hindi and English. Normally, many teachers said that they have noticed children saying Sita room sitting instead of Sita is sitting in the room Ramu apple eating instead of Ramu is eating an apple Gita class sleeping instead of Gita is sleeping in the class I homework not write instead of I didn't write my homework he tea drinking instead of he is drinking tea. They market going instead of they are going to market. Why do you think children are making these mistakes while they are speaking? Don't you think they have learned this pattern from their mother tongue? Subject, object, verb. That's why in all the sentences which we see here, the verb is Towards the end, sitting, eating, sleeping, right, drinking, going. 
so here they are following subject object verb pattern that they learned implicitly from their mother tongue most probably from telugu or kannada or hindi then how are we going to address this problem without saying them or with a telling them that this is your problem you should not use the verb at the end the verb should come in between the subject and the object how do we need to address this we are not going to teach him any grammar right so what are we going to do let's see we are going to take up a bridging gap activity suggested by dr k n anandan and this activity might be helpful for you because i tried it in my classroom and it was really really successful so let us look at this picture and follow the process of bridging gap activity so this is the picture of a family you can see all the family members doing different kinds of work in the picture first let's write all the words related to the picture a family a home grandparents a grandmother a grandfather parents a mother a father children sons daughters girls boys a tree a few more words a comb a mirror an oil bottle a hen grains a bucket a tap a water sorry water clothes a chair a bench an iron box let's also write the action words related to the picture folding filling eating ironing sweeping working looking relaxing feeding plating sitting standing now let's see how we can write basic sentences using only subject and verb without using the object the girl filling the boy folding the grandmother sweeping the grandfather ironing the father relaxing the mother plating the boy feeding the girl looking this girl over here so we know that these sentences are not complete there is something missing let's make them complete sentence the girl is filling the boy is folding the grandmother is sweeping the grandfather is ironing the father is relaxing the mother is plating the boy is feeding the girl is looking okay so these are some basic sentences which we form or which we made up using only subject and verb without using the object now let's see now let's see the same sentences using the objects the girl is filling what water the boy the boy is folding what clothes the grandfather is ironing what clothes again the grandmother is sweeping with what broom 
the father is relaxing where in a chair the grandmother is plaiting what hay the boy is feeding who a hen the girl is looking where into a mirror we know that the sentences are not complete not all but some of the sentences are not complete the girl is filling water this sentence is it's fine i think it's right the boy is folding clothes i don't think we need to add something to this we didn't add anything else the grandfather is ironing clothes okay the grandmother is sweeping with a broom here we added with the father is relaxing in a chair we added an extra word in the mother is plaiting the girl's hair the boy is feeding a hen the girl is looking into a mirror this bridging gap activity it was very useful in my classroom to solve this subject verb object problem children started using correct sentences and i never told them that verb in english should come in between the subject and the object and this entire video is for the facilitators and the teachers not to be shown to the children directly it's only discussing with you about our classroom problems especially when the children are facing problems with the structure of a sentence that means framing the sentences basic sentences what do you think do you think this video will be helpful for you if you have suggestions and if you have a practice which is better than this please share with us in the comment section below thank you for watching this video next time we'll discuss another problem that we are facing in the classroom thank you